Okay, so two, two equal fractions. Two equal fractions. This one is actually gonna, uh, we're gonna do something a little different. It'll actually end up being a little easier. When you have two equal fractions, step one is you just simply cross multiply. You, you don't have to mess around with common denominators and all that if you just have two equal fractions. Now, if you have, if there was something else here, if I had a plus four or something, then, you know, I'd have to, I'd have to do the whole LCD thing, blah, 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 blah. It'd be a lot harder. But if you just have two fractions only and they are equal, you can cross multiply. What do I mean by cross multiply? I mean, you go this to that, three to the X minus five and the X plus five to the minus one. So we end up with three, X minus five and minus one, X plus five, like that. Just diagonal, diagonal, cross multiply. That's what you do. Now, I, I wanna, I wanna, well, let's, let's go on with the problem. And, and then you just uh, multiply multiply the parentheses, multiply through the parentheses, multiply, distribute, distribute through the parentheses. So that three will go there and there. So let me get back to the blue here. So we get three X minus 15. This will go here and here. Minus X minus five, like so. Okay, and then now we have just, it's just X to the first power, it's not X squared. So we don't need to get a zero or factor or quadratic formula, any of that stuff. X to the first power, just subtract lower X both sides or just add or subtract it. Um, I should say add or subtract the lower x. Who's the lower x? Well, it's this one. So I'm going to actually add x to both sides like so. And what that will, that'll cancel out right there, won't it? And so then what do we get? This is 4x. It's 3x minus 4x. Minus 15 is minus 5, like that. And then just finish getting x alone. So add 15. That. And we get 4x is 10, like so. And then last step, you know it's always divide, right? So always divide. And so x, we got to reduce that fraction. All fractions must be reduced. Again, I'm glad to show you on your calculators how to do that automatically. I need to show you independently, though, because every calculator is a little different. Uh, five halves. So the answer to that one would be five halves. So that's how to now, now let me show you. I want to go back up. I, I want again, I'm, I'm math will be easier to follow if you understand that it's just following logic. There's not a million different trick rules you do. I know it can feel that way at times, but that's not so. It's they're all just logic and they have logical reasons. Um, and let me show you this one because like, it looks like here, like I'm doing some brand new trick out of nowhere. Oh, you got to remember. If there's two equal fractions, you cross multiply, but if, you know, well, no, really, I mean, yes and no. No, in the sense that what you need to realize is when you have denominators, you're always going to multiply both sides by that denominator. That's what you're going to always do. That, and, and that's legal, right? Because you could do the same thing to both sides anytime you want, right? That's not me making up rules. You know that's true. If two things are equal, you know, if two things are equal and you do the same thing to both of them, they got to be equal afterwards. You know that. You've known that since you were a kid, right? Well, what's that to do with cross multiplying? Let me show you. What if I had just looked and said, I'm going to just do the LCD thing. Remember what the LCD thing was? What was the LCD thing? That you, mo the LCD would be both of these put together, right? It's both the denominators put together, right? 
So what if I had done that and said, my answer is it would be the same. Let me show you. X plus five, X, you gotta use them both. And you gotta do over one, right? That was the other way we did fractions. I wanna show you that that other way is the same way. Watch. So if I instead multiplied all the terms, both sides, by the LCD over one, and the LCD of course equals one of each, which means both of them, right? One of each multiplied together, right? X plus five, X plus five. What, what would happen? Look, 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 look with me. X plus fives will cancel. X minus fives will cancel. What's left here? Three times X minus five. Isn't that exactly what we got by cross multiplying? You see? What's, what's up here? Negative one times X plus five. Isn't that exactly what we got by cross multiplying? All right, so I want you to see, I hope you see now, that when I say cross multiply, that's just a shortcut for the same thing. If you just do it the long way, multiply both sides by the LCD, which is one of each denominator item, and then cross cancel, you'll get the same thing. It's the same. Math is just following the logic. It's true, right? If you do the same thing to both sides, they got to be equal afterwards. So either way, it's quicker. It's just quicker to just send, I'm just going to go boom, boom, and cross multiply. Just saves a little bit of time, but it's not a new rule, really. It's just a shortcut to the same old LCD rule. Multiply all the, all the terms. So when you have fractions, here's what you want to think. When you have a problem with fractions, you need to multiply every term by the LCD over one. And what is the LCD? It's one of each term, one of each denominator term multiplied together.